God, we thank you again today and pray that you will bless us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are reading from 1 John chapter 3. If you have followed us for a couple of days, we've been looking at the reality of sonship. And uh, we've talked about the power of sonship. We've looked at the privilege of sonship. Today, by the grace of God, we move on to talk about the promise of sonship. The promise of sonship. In 1 John chapter 3, I read verse 1, 2, and 3. Behold, what manner of law the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. We are, we are looking at this manner of love that the Father has bestowed upon us. In this verse 1, you see the relationship between Father and Son. You see the cord that binds that relationship is called love. And he said, the best word to describe that word is the manner. That love produces what we call a privilege in songs. We did that yesterday. Coming to verse 2, Behold, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear, but we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That is the promise for of sons. That if we have God, a heavenly father, as our father by creation, and as our father by regeneration, the Lord is saying here, there is a promise that we stand to enjoy. This promise has a present impute, and it has a futuristic provision for each and every one of us. As we look at God's word in this verse 2, there is a promise that as long as you are attached to your heavenly father by regeneration, he said, we become carriers of his DNA, his nature, his attributes. The blood that flows in his veins is infused inside our own. And therefore, we enjoy precious promises. And so he said here, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. When we are sons of God, the Bible is saying, every provision, every portion that the Lord God set aside for Jesus Christ belongs to you and it belongs to me. That is the promise of sonship. I come to that our parable of the lost son again as we continue where we stopped yesterday in the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 15. Now we said verse 11 and it said a certain man has two sons. Parables, they are inspired illustrations that Jesus Christ used to drive home his point so as to make his uh, message clearer is preaching more illustrative in verse 12 and the youngest of them said to his father father now the youngest of them said to his father father look at that in capital letter f give me the portion of goods that pertained to me and he the father divided them is living the father divided them is living. When you look at this verse 12, you see there's a promise that you and I enjoy, so are supposed to enjoy as 
a privilege of our connection to the Heavenly Father. What is that prayer? Look at it. That, what is that promise? The, the Son said, Give me. And the Father gave him and divided it to him. What is the promise of sonship then? What is the promise for sonship then? It is the promise of asking and receiving. It is the promise that if as sons we can ask of our Father in heaven, He is ever willing to give unto us. You see, even though we have privileges in sonship, these privileges, they are latent in nature. We use prayer to, en to unart. We use prayer to, uh, prayer to enforce. We use prayer to demand, to bring into reality what really exists, but we have not enjoyed. That is the principle and the practice of sonship. So then, he said in this passage of scripture, that if we our sons, and if we can ask our father, give me. Do you ask him what rightly belongs to you? That is why the Bible said in Matthew chapter 7, in Matthew chapter 7 and in verse 7, he said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that accepts receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he shall ask him fish, will he give him serpent? If ye then being evil, know how to good give gifts unto your children, how much more? See that now. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? Give good things to them that ask Him. You see, the younger son followed the principle here. There was a promised provision and he keyed into that through the act of praying and believing. So, he asked and he received. Give me. And the Father gave him the portion that belongs to him. And you there today hearing me now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What rightly belongs to you is coming your way even now in Jesus name. Give me. And the Father gave unto him. And look at how he puts it now. How much more. If you been evil, know how to give good gift to your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven he is there now give good things to them that ask him that is the promise of sonship it is the promise of asking and receiving can you therefore then ask as citizens of the kingdom as sons in the kingdom can you utilize the promise of asking asking for preservation asking for provision asking for protection Asking for supernatural prosperity, asking for open doors, asking for privileges. All these are yours. If you can ask today, He's going to grant it unto you. You seek in your body, you ask Him, you receive your healing. You are oppressed, demonized, under the oppression and captivity of demons and evil spirits. You ask Him, you receive your deliverance. Are you challenged in home, in life, in marriage, in ministry, in family, in financial issues, in your secular pursuit, as a student, in your academic career? Are there some challenges for mailing you? If you can utilize the promise of sonship by making your request known unto him, he will grant it unto you. He will say he will give you good Things, and I'm praying for you today, good things are coming your way. In your spiritual life, good things are coming your way. The gifts of the Spirit. The grace of God that brings salvation. The power of righteousness and holiness. Dominion over demonic activities. Supernatural elevation and promotion. 
a lifting is coming your way. The Lord is turning your story around for good in Jesus' name. This then is the promise of sonship. That is why as we close, the Bible makes it very, very clear in the book of Second Peter that there are these promises, they are precious promises. It is by these precious promises that we will be able to attain unto life and enjoy complete total satisfaction. Are you there? This promise that is yea and amen will come your way, overflowing into your life, and will turn every aspect of your life around for good in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it very clear. Wherefore, in Second Peter 1 verse 4 as we pray, Wherefore are giving us to us exceeding. Can you see that? Great and precious. Look at the characteristics of the promise of sonship there. One, it is exceeding. To exceed means it is above limits. Number two, great. To be great means it is higher in dimension, in volume, in size, in capacity, in influence. That is the promise you, you, you are to enjoy there. Number three, it is precious. To be precious means it is unique, it is outstanding, it is spectacular, it is beautiful. Oh, wonderful. Look at the, the, the adjective the Bible uses here to describe the promises that belong to you. Exceeding, don't forget great, and precious promises that by this you, sons, will be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through Lord. That was what the prodigal son did here. To this point, he was wonderful. To this point, the prodigal son got it right. Tomorrow we continue as we use that case study and pray that the Holy Spirit will bat a new insight into you and there is going to be a complete turnaround for you in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because of your word that is coming at this time. Anybody there joining Israel faith with my own and standing on the promises, I pray that there will be a major breakthrough in the realm of the Spirit for you in Jesus' name. Thank you because you are already at work in our lives. You are turning our story around. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.